Just how strong is the night? And what do I mean by that? Well, firstly, before we get over the fact that we're trying to jump over the moon here, I mean, which isn't necessarily an unreasonable feat if we just consider the idea that the moon rises and the moon falls. And if the moon goes under the horizon, are we ourselves jumping over the moon? So, that being said, maybe there is more truth to what can be expressed with the mouth, even though it sounds far-fetched and unrealistic. It is an experience in life that we are experiencing. And the idea that we can come to some focus in our realities, which attunes the likeness of focus being to purpose in life, and with great purpose there is much more to existence than what we detail it to be. That then being, how strong is the night? One of the first things that we could outline is in measuring strength, we must first come to the conclusion that a thing isn't necessary. Now, given what we have stated before, that if life itself isn't necessarily predicated by the conditions that we set there unto itself, in as much being just a gathering and a dispersion of resources, or some flowing river of time that simply navigates all expressions of things until it expresses the end of time, then we can say that life itself comes to some form of meaning as the idea of consciousness spreads itself to it coming into consciousness along any pathways, but as soon as consciousness itself comes into consciousness, then we have come to the focal point of life, which dictates that life isn't necessarily the experience of anything which contains a condition that isn't necessarily attuned towards consciousness. One of the predicating factors engaging the strength of the night is going to be how is it that we make up time? The idea that we can observe things past or beyond our own experience of having to fall under the conditions of life, which other things we are predicating have to fall under in so much as they can't necessarily observe things outside of necessity. So if we ourselves can come to the conclusion that we are able to observe things out of necessity then there itself is one of the strengths of the night in being able to stay awake far past and beyond the idea that the cycles of life are just there for the experiential that the cycles of life are just there for this again idea of necessity, that it isn't necessarily a choice, you see, to stay awake. It is out of necessity, and the necessity is the dreamlike state that exists as the human being. Is the human being a dream? Well, it seems that if it really was, would we be able to prove it beyond such things? In so much that if it really was a dream, and the greatest dream that there ever was, would it not attune or be able to handle the idea of the dream itself trying to expose itself as a fraud and in so much as doing actually adjust itself so that the dream cannot tell itself that it is beyond necessity. Now, if we are trying to observe necessity, the idea that we can separate factors into something which allows us to experience something but then predicate necessity at the same time is like there being one great time and a lesser time. There is a great light and a lesser light. The ideas of the sun and the moon, both rings in the sky in which time itself attunes to. Now, that being said, that is like trying to describe one factor of life and applying all of life to the factor itself 
without necessarily taking into consideration that there are multiple factors and the idea of trying to go along with some idea is going to inevitably lead us astray as one time itself of necessity doesn't necessarily allow us the idea of bridging non-necessitation over to necessity if we don't necessarily give up our idea that we are able to define one line of thought to harbor a multiple expanse of thoughts at the same time going in all separate directions. The idea is like trying to say, focus on one thing while explaining everything. Are you simply just telling a story? Are you leaving something out? Are you leaving something behind? It's like going on a trip and traveling and forgetting some piece of luggage which would have helped you to, you know, figure something out or have something else along with you on your way. But in so doing, as you travel, you realize that have we actually really lost anything? Is the idea of one thing itself actually predicated in the idea of all things? And are anything actually, is anything actually separate from another thing? So then as we fathom these concepts, we come to some position where we say, well, what are things within our reality if everything is like this, it seems much more appealing or correct to say that everything in life is a metaphor. Everything is the idea of one thing trying to describe life and then work around the idea of how this system of this one metaphor relates to everything. And the idea that we have, you know, a time over here and a time over here so that in the metaphor, we don't necessarily lose track of the idea that what we're doing is actually true to the extent of what is necessity itself. What then takes us to the place of where we can say such things as, well, if we forget some piece of luggage in our travels, and we end up in some foreign realm, then is it not necessarily like being more awake and less into the dream if all creature comforts themselves separate us from things like animals in the scene? Well, how far can we go away from the night and the dream before we come into some state of being that is just like observing everything, but is that not the human being itself? The idea of observation, the idea that we sit and look at things on a screen and we don't necessarily feel contemplation or frustration, it's just observation. So how strong is the night if that is itself daylight? Is the animal itself like a state, not necessarily something that goes around in some frustrated mode to try to find food and to try to find shelter underground. All these different animals, it seems pretty fairly wild if you ask me that all they do is find one type of food and they hibernate behind the scenes. If we say then that all life relates to some conscious thing, then this conscious thing doesn't necessarily exist for the degradation and the denaturization of things, it exists because it exists and it doesn't necessarily need necessity, you see. So what are animals then to you, to me, if these things have some sense of there being a greater thing that observes something and says to itself, well, sure, they do that. But what is their reason for existing? Is it necessarily that? Well, how long is the night before we forget daylight? And we say to ourselves that if that is daylight, 
then these things exist as some grand metaphor, just as opening and closing the door. If they don't necessarily exist out of fear, they exist for the idea that daylight is near. So how strong is the night? Can it beat daylight? If daylight, we're saying, is the idea that all things come to some sense of there is no playing, well then, perhaps we could say that in the night there is some great dream. The dream itself is trying to dream. The idea that the dream itself needs the night the idea that the dream can even fight. And if we can feel the fight of the dream, then how strong itself is dreaming. If you're good at fighting, though, maybe the best thing you can do is nullify. Well, nullify the struggle. And in so much as doing, you've given the idea of sight and distance, and a place to see, then maybe in some sense, daylight can also dream. It's dreamy. Listen, am I like going to get into a situation where if I commit to doing work, that is not very consistent, but is very tedious and requires a lot of specificity in regards to me doing something that a lot of people are counting on. I am very aware as to the idea that if I commit to something like that, then there's a possibility that I get into a situation where I have an interaction occur, which leads to a lot of problems, like as to why I stopped working regularly on the job site anyways, that ends and results in me being handcuffed and told to get off the job site because I'm not necessarily listening or doing something correctly. This has come to the point in time where am I just a product of the most unlucky circumstances that there are? And where do my politics and my beliefs actually interact with my communities and my states so that when I am told that not everything just magically appears, I can still say, well, it's not necessarily because of lack of my trying and I am in a very debilitated state because of having to do things like this over a very long period of time do I have any rights whatsoever that are laid up in protection for me to say that no, I don't have to do this because I have tried all this stuff and it hasn't worked out? How beat can somebody actually become before it's just like asking them to be done, you know? If you guys are asking me to be done, then I would just as soon rather not do it in the first place, right? I would just as soon to not even have to go to where I am physically beat. I would rather be done already. And rather than getting to the position where the community doesn't necessarily know this has been going on for a very long time. And then all of a sudden, you know, when people do come and begin to take me away because I have nothing, not necessarily because of 
bad decisions. I've tried to hedge my bets as much as, you know, Stonehenge in regards to moving large stones and the idea of being able to protect myself from all the random chaotic, you know, happenings of reality. And even in so doing, I've come to the place where, no, I cannot afford any of the stuff and I have nothing. So when all of a sudden people come to me and they say, well, is this your place? Are you paying for any of this? No, 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 no. And then what else do I have to say other than, yeah, if you get anything good in this world, it's from the spirit of goodness. So it's like relationship is the idea of freedom because then you have the free freedom to be, which is like choice. So actually all that you really do in this world to earn anything is just be yourself, which if you are a good enough character, probably doesn't actually conflict with anybody's thinking of what work is anyways. But when you obviously have the ideas of a bad character anyways, it's going to conflict and confront with the idea that freedom is actually the idea of compensation. Well, it doesn't necessarily serve my best interests to say that on the spot, but I don't know what else to say when I'm being taken away and I don't necessarily know if it's better to just say, hey, I don't want to work anyway because I could make a mistake. Well, am I going to get in trouble the other way by saying that, hey, I'm not going to participate in this action because of what's been going on for the last month? I just barely got out of, you know, incarceration for all of these things. And when it's not seen by anybody who would be dealing with my situation and they just pound a gavel and say, yeah, like I'm reading the rap sheet right here. All it has on here is like, oh, the guy like cooked food with a blowtorch. Yeah, that seems pretty irrational. And it's like he's been diagnosed by like, um, you know, three or four physicians. And it's like he has a history of repeated offense. We're not going to like look any further into this. Because it does end up getting to the place of religion. And if you look far enough into the history of why it is that I ended up in places like this anyways, was because, you know, of people all of a sudden beating these ideas of Satan and freedom and choice and democracy and monarchy into my head and trying to riddle all those out along with, you know, the ideas of just personal politics from a day-to-day -day basis, not necessarily the idea of having to understandably explain your actions word for word for, you know, actions over like an entire month so that you can show what the purpose of living in this world is. And it's, it's like goes to the idea of the purpose of being itself. Is it a law or is it just happen naturally, you know? And then all of a sudden it's like everybody's caught in their own sort of hypocrisies and life is very complicated and it's not necessarily just the idea of there's exact, you know, sort of judiciary law, but then also conscientious law um, or physical law where there's an opposite and equal reaction to um, precise events that you've partaken in that seem to be debilitating towards your character. And it's very hard to scale out all the different actions that you could do during the day to say that you deserve to yourself, but your peers as well, that you deserve to be in a better situation. Now, obviously, that is the game of life. And that is why there's wars. And that is why there are all of these different political factions across the face of the earth. I've basically been reduced down to that because it's like, 
Yeah, well, at some point in time, politics is a belief system, right? It's, it's the idea that given the nature of reality, these are our policies because we have experienced things like this. I'm not necessarily willing to go and do certain things because I have been traumatized from different experiences that have led me to believe that if I am ever going to find true peace in this world, that it's not going to be by going down that road. And that is my policy. And so when it comes to the idea of what and whether or not you are going to witness something or like, you know, like live, that is like true politics then. I'm not necessarily going to do that because I want to live. It's pretty bare knuckle politics, but that still is a policy and that probably is a much more agreeable pol political policy that I could, you know, say a lot of people should agree with. Yeah, I'm not going to necessarily jump off of this cliff because I don't necessarily think that it suits my best interests. I'm not necessarily going to partake in these actions every single day over this time, over this period of time, because I think that in this reality, if there are so many ways to make money, then obviously the idea that I have to do something to provide a sense of my being, having to have this support of whatever this re requisite is, I think that it obviously disregards the idea that the world is very complicated and that complexity is actually like the idea of work itself. And the more that the work is personal, obviously you've come up to the idea of I'm just doing this because I enjoy it and people enjoy me. That's popularity. But if we extend the arm in the other direction to where it's like the idea of work and work has no relation of just doing what you want. It's what needs to be done. We've reduced the idea of, of, of work to just need. Then is this something that we really need? Well, needs themselves have a way of projecting into the future because today we don't necessarily need any of this. There's probably a lot of things that don't need to be done, but needs themselves are as basic as uh, a need to live, right? And when you are suffering and the activities that everyone is saying that you need to do don't necessarily make sense for your relationship with where everything comes from, right? Then you can basically say that I don't need to do that or I need to do this if I want to experience any form of peace in my reality. And that is all based upon whatever experiences that you have had, which have led you down this road to formulating these ideas so that when you come across somebody who asks you what you think, you state these policies in a way which makes it seem like a need because that's your personality. And there is a way for personality to die and it's by it's denying the fact that experience and these, these uh, ex expressive ways of expressing yourself aren't necessarily a need. If you've come to the place where you can describe basically what it is that you believe beauty to be, you can die from that. And that is your politics, your policies. And I do believe that you have a right. If you can't express that, then you have a right to say, no, that is not where everything comes from. This is my religion. This is my politics. These are my laws. Okay. I think that at some point in time, those things 
can become sort of a triumvirate and become sort of like one, just like a lot of religions try to collapse the idea of spirit, flesh, and um, omnipotence, you know, something that's physical, something that is like metaphysical, and something that is everything. It's undescribable. And at the same point in time, it is the one description that you use to describe all things. Maybe that's love. Being able to say politics and law and religion are the same thing, I think, is probably more real the more you've had real experiences with dangerous people and circumstances in your reality, because it does end up taking you away from where it is that you receive your strength to live. And I think that I have come to the place now where I've had to riddle this out myself in such description that it basically has reverted to the idea of upon my doorstep into my room, we are entering into a place which is very much so like going across the border of a nation. And for me to say something about where money comes from, like I did in the very beginning of this video, and to believe something like that, because in my experience, that is the only way that I have been able to make it out of the house to interact with other people. That is my truth. Because there's no way that I have been able to do the things that I have done in this last little while unless I have totally believed that. Now, we can debate all you know day long about whether or not my policies are true or incorrect or my religion is true or incorrect or my laws are just, right? But that's about as finicky as global politics anyways, as it is. And I think that there is a lot to be said about, you know, numbers will always justify the idea that you are safe no matter what. You are safe to do all these things no matter what. But I can just say by my own personal experience that after having done some things and experienced certain things in a certain manner, I don't think that numbers are necessarily on my side. It's a whole to the you know, means justify the ends sort of thing. Like how much are we going to sacrifice to get there? Right? And it's just now I almost can't do any of the things that I enjoy unless I defend this position because now I do have physical ailments and things that are very contingent upon you know, a lot of these experiences being very debilitating towards me mentally and physically. And so if I am ever going to participate in any action that I feel to be something that is conducive towards my living um, a respectful life, a life worth living, a life full of, you know, joyous things, that I have to have these policies that state that, yeah, true work is like complexity, but the more true it is, you can't necessarily take credit for it because it's like automatic, sort of like the sun, how it just rises up in the air, but it's for no one. It's sort of like freeware, free, you know, like freeware ideas and free thoughts. It's sort of like um, newspapers that are just for free out on stands. The more that you want it to be like actual pure work, right? And life obviously resides somewhere in the middle of these things. But I feel like I've very eloquently stated the ideas of monetary failings in regards to it being a free choice because it represents the idea that you have personality to choose things anyways versus it being pure work. Now we can talk about the lineage and scaling of money to where it comes in to contact from other people and your relationships with all of these different entities, whether or not you know them by name or just by number sort of thing. But 
if that's the case, then it still comes to the point in which what is it that you think is important in this world? Whatever the entity is, the individual, they don't necessarily have, uh, you know, it's more of a question that's relatable the closer that they are to you, you know, kind of thing. Like, what is important to you? And the more that it is just like this money, I feel like obviously there's going to be loose ends to it. And so people have to pick a side. There's going to be a lot of loose ends to this money if it's just money because it's going to be like money's just being sent everywhere so everyone can make lots of decisions and it's going to, you know, we can talk about economics crashing and things like that or is it just the idea that people don't necessarily know how to budget themselves even when they are rich. You can, rich dynamics work, you know, and we can talk about, well, maybe we don't necessarily need all these creature comforts and we can go back and revert to like a stone age where we do get all of our essentials from the you know the ideas of the sun and the moon and the and water and things like things like that but then you know this whole hierarchy that we've set up is so far like off on another it runs off of another clock where we keep track of our ability to relate to the real world but at the same point in time it's its own independent thing that's based off of relationships People have to choose. Like I said, are you going to build it off of money or relationship? And like I said before, something has to give. Maybe my time is just up, but I'm not necessarily shying away from saying that. I have said directly, yeah, well, maybe I'm just done because I am hurting and I am suffering from doing all of these things and they don't necessarily fit within my wheelhouse of my being able to actually feel like I am a part of a company, a community, or some form of machine that gets things done eloquently, right? No, I feel like I am clashing very wildly with my environment and that I have had the worst experience in regards to all of these things that have propped themselves up as to being able to give me the ability to pay for things in this world. No, they have not afforded me much at all. Really, honestly. So is it about relationship or work? And is this a daily struggle? Is the idea that I could be arrested and then all of a sudden this not being taken into consideration when I am taken somewhere and I am stripped of everything, all of my hard work and all of my studies and all of the things that I have written and all of the things that I have posted and just said that I am somebody who is psycho and that I should just be put into a bunk bed with people that are sick and ill because I am not willing to go and do something or because I disagree with somebody mildly about my politics and about where all the money comes from. If you get the money, what's the difference? You got what you wanted, right? And if you have your family and everything like that, then why don't you count your blessings and such and whatnot? Well, if this is a daily thing, then this certainly is like a job for me anyways, trying to stay out of all of this asylums. And the, the problem is, is that I have done real stuff in this world. I've made crafts and went and put notes in bottles and put gems in, you know, like elaborate jewel, jewel, like jewels and things and sent them out with notes and tried to make this this experience something that does say, hey, the greatest thing is imagination because you can do anything. And the world will then all of a sudden say that everything is plain and flat. Maybe that's just the idea. Is the earth plain or is it very colorful? Well, sure, we go through times of winter and, and spring, you know, and then summer. But if we're not necessarily able to do this, do we see the color? Is the world black and white? You could probably put up a pretty good argument for that and at least show some statistics as to what people's government politics were. 
to say whether or not the world was black and white. And you could look at it in a very colorful way to say, well, it's pretty black and white over there. If I had to say that there was some way to have like genuine thought that riddles out all the elaborate mechanics of the world to say, yeah, well, we can consider this and we can sort of draw upon these things to come to these conclusions, which does give us a better picture of our world and gives us the ability to think a little bit differently so that we're not just stuck in the same ruts of continually trying to forward ourselves in some direction which doesn't necessarily provide us with the greatest experience possible. After all, that's what everyone's after, right? The greatest experience possible. Is that all religion is? Well, then plenty of people die for that. Just as much so they die for being megalomaniacs or dictators, right? Or for just being downright like SOL, 